Example number 10 asks us to find the critical points of a function. So let me go ahead and write down that function for you. It's f as a function of x is equal to 3x to the fourth minus 8x to the third plus 6x squared minus 1. Now it wants us to go ahead and locate any of the critical points. Now the critical points are defined as points where the derivative at those guys, we'll call x naught an arbitrary critical point where the derivative is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function, find its derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 12x to the third minus 24x, excuse me, squared plus 12 plus 12x. So we've got 12x cubed minus 24x squared plus 12x. Now, to find the critical points, we take that guy and we set it equal to zero. Just like that. Now we're going to solve this. So the best way to solve this is by factoring. Okay, So let's go ahead and factor here. The GCF that I can pull out is 12x. And when I do that, what's left is x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we'll factor this if we can. So let's go ahead and try here. Okay, so we've got two things that multiply together to give me positive 1, but add to give me negative 2. Well, that's clearly minus 1. So we've got 12 times x times x minus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now we've got the prime factorization of this polynomial. And so we'll use the zero product property. which says that if you have a bunch of things multiplied together and you get zero, that solutions to this are when the factors are equal to zero. So the first factor is equal to zero when x is zero. The second factor is equal to zero when x is one. And the third factor is equal to zero when x is one. Now this has a multiplicity of one, whereas these two have multiplicities of two okay so so well just all together it has a multiplicity of two so let's go ahead and take a take a look at the derivative near these points so one of the tests that we can do is we can check very close to zero to see what the derivative is doing is it positive or negative so for example Let's go ahead and we'll grab the calculator. And so we've got 12 times. Now I'm going to grab a point that's close to 0, like negative 0.1, raise it to the third, minus 24 times negative 0.1, raised to the second, plus 12 times negative 0.1. And so it gives me a negative value. So what it tells me is for here's zero. It tells me just a little bit to the left that the derivative f prime, okay, let's say of x is negative. Now let's go ahead and check just a little bit to the other side. 
So let's try positive 0.1. And that guy comes up to be positive. So what we've got What we have is a situation where the tangent lines around the point zero are negative. It, it looks as though the tangent lines are negative to the left and positive to the right, which means they're coming down like this, and then they're coming back up like this. So we would expect this guy right here to be a local minimum. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at the other, the other single point um, there. So this guy right here, okay, if we start plugging in some values, okay, well, let's use yellow. So right here is one. Let's check a point just to the left of that guy. And then I'll show you some other ways of looking at this as well. So what I want now is let's use point nine because that guy is just a little bit to the left. That guy comes out to be positive. So f prime of x is positive over here. And then let's check on this side. So maybe we'll go to 1 1.1. Hang on, guys. OK, so <laughs> you'll have to excuse me. I've got two little ones here. So. Over on this side, um, when we compute the values, we come up with a positive as well. So f prime of x is also positive. Now, we should say that this isn't a perfect way of doing it. In fact, there's, there's better tests, and we'll, we'll discuss those in a bit. But this does tell us that the derivative, okay, the rate of change over on this side is positive, so we're heading upward. And over on this side is positive, so we're headed upward. So it's likely not a now another thing to notice is that because of the multiplicity when we have a multiplicity of 1 that means that we cross we cross an axis we cross from positive to negative or from negative to positive at that zero amount so what this tells us is that we're going from negative to positive the derivative is going from negative to positive so we cross through however when we've got, when we're going from positive to positive, when we have a multiplicity of two, then we end up with a thing that looks like this on the derivative, not on the original function. So the difference is, is that this multiplicity tells us what the derivative looks like. And so we have a change of sign here and not here. And so that's why this guy over here is not this is not, these two guys right here are not, okay, do not provide a local min or max. Okay, so we don't have a, ch a sign change right there.